Hi, Hillary here. In this video, I'm going to go over how to find good scientific research articles for your semester project or your research project and how to find them fast. As a review, here are the six guiding questions of inquiry which you are working through for your semester project. You've already finished your two introductory paragraphs, which means you've covered your issue and you've covered what type of judgment your inquiry issue requires. Do you remember the criteria for an issue? Yes, they are in the form of a question, neutral wording, focused and controversial. And the types of judgment it might be? Yes, factual, ethical, instrumental, possibly even aesthetic or interpretive. And now in unit two, we've been gathering arguments. Up to now, we've gathered them mostly from the internet and we've gathered interesting web pages and laterally uh, searched them to find more about the web pages. But today in this video, what we're going to do is the scientific articles that we're going to find. And these scientific articles will have new and different arguments about your issue. So what is our goal here when we're finding peer-reviewed references? For this project, we want to find three peer-reviewed research articles. That means three articles where you can see a clear method section and a clear result section. We're not looking for analysis of your topic. We're not looking for reviews of other research. We're looking for real research where the authors have actually done the research. It might be in a, a lab experiment. It might be a survey study. It might be uh, some other kind of clinical study, but it's definitely research with methods and results clearly visible. And you also want to find one meta-analysis or summary review. A summary review may also be referred to as a systematic review. So what's the difference between a meta-analysis and a summary review? A meta-analysis is a very particular type of article where they take all the research that has been done on this topic and they combine it as best they can into one gigantic study and do statistics on that. So for instance, you may have 10 studies that have about 25, 30 subjects each. You combine them into a meta-analysis and all of a sudden you have a study with 300 subjects, which means that whatever trends or results you find are that much more statistically significant because you have a larger sample. On the other hand, a summary review uh, is where researchers take all the articles that have been written and just try to summarize the conclusions and see what kind of trends are around. The meta-analysis is the better one for this project. Hopefully you can find a meta-analysis. If you can't, you can settle for a summary review. Amongst these three peer-reviewed research articles here, one of them you are going to dive deeply into, make method slides about it, make results slide about it, really, really uh, get into that one article. And then with that background, you'll write short summaries of the other two. So one of them you really need to be super interested in, be able to understand it. And what I want to emphasize as you are looking for your research articles is, that good is more important than fast. What do I mean by good? First of all, the topic is directly related to your inquiry question. In other words, if you are doing a uh, project on electric cars and the cost to the environment of creating the batteries for electric cars, and you find a really interesting article on electric cars and how it reduces carbon dioxide emissions because there's no exhaust adding, being added to the air, that is not really related enough to your inquiry question. Not at all. It has the same keyword, some of them, electric car, environmental benefit, but it's not about batteries. You may want to save it, but don't think of it as one of your primary three. The next criteria is that you will be able to understand it with a little work maybe, but you'll be able to understand, especially the article that you're digging into. You want to be able to understand the methods you want to be able to understand the results. Uh, you may need to learn a few statistical terms or a few uh, scientific lab terms, but it's not going to be totally out of the realm of understanding within a few hours of work. So what I'm really referring to is uh, computer models. Sometimes 
articles are very, very much a computer model type of research, and they can get very complicated, for example. So if you're not a computer models expert and you don't want to become one this semester, maybe don't make that your principal uh, article of the three research articles that you're going to do. The third criteria is to look very much for methods and results as you're searching for these articles. If you see a clear method section and a clear results section, then you know it's a research article, not an analysis, not a review. We want clear research studies or surveys or experiments for the three articles that you collect. And remember, good is better than fast. You may be able to find your, all your articles within an hour or so, but it might take you two or three or even more time to find some good articles and get them uploaded to your research folders. The time spent now on finding and choosing good articles to support your project will really pay off and save you much more time down the road. So let's get started. Here I have a flowchart that shows three different avenues for finding articles. And I would like you to try all three because each one has a slightly different library of articles that they will give to you, what they will have available for you. The first one is to simply Google your topic with the word research behind it. That's not using Scholar, it's just simply Googling it or uh, using whatever browser you use. And here's the search path. Let's see what that looks like in real life. For an example, I've chosen one of our resilience collaboration questions. Can resilience be taught to children? So I type that into the search box, followed by a space and the word research. As you can see, the first things that come up are basically resilience guides for parents probably very interesting, but they are not methods and results scientific research. So I'm going to scroll down. More review articles, the science of resilience, and then I find this .gov article, which is from the NIH, the National Institute of Health. So I click on it, and it brings me to this article, Resilience in Children Developmental Perspectives. So this is a review and analysis article to not this time directed towards parents, but directed towards other scientists. That might be a start. Be careful that section two, Methods in Developmental Resilience Science, is not a method section. It's just a review of developmental resilience science methods. So it doesn't say uh, we had 30 subjects, we did this intervention. It's just a review of methods. So although this article is not the type of research article I'm looking for, I am going to save it for its background information. And also, it has a lot of references at the end of the article. In fact, it has a hundred resources or references. Very often, the article you find just by Googling it will have a lot of references at the end. And you can look through those references, scan those references, and find out some more articles. So let's see what that looks like in real life. To make sense of all the references I found in the review article, I tried using Command F to pull up the search box, the find box. In PCs, it's Control F, I believe. And I typed in teach, hoping that that would help me focus down on some of these many, many reference articles. But in this case, it didn't really help. The teach search brought me to articles about how to teach teachers to be resilient. And what I'm really interested in is can we teach children to be resilient? So then I decided to just quickly skim the article and scan the references and see what I could find that might be helpful. Whenever I found an article that looked interesting, I highlighted it, copied and pasted it into the reference page in my project folder, and then used the links right there in the article to have a look at the article itself. Once I've saved a few of those articles that I think look promising, I get to go on a treasure hunt, see what I've found. So let's take a look at uh, item number five and click on PubMed. And it's an article, Modifiable Resilience Factors to Childhood Adversity. Um, it says we identify and document evidence for five modifiable resilience factors. They're documenting evidence that might be researched. Let me look at it. Wait, stop, before you do anything, go get the citation. 
And I like MLA. If you like APA, that's fine. Copy and paste it right into your reference document. You won't have to look for it again. Good job. As you can see, this is a free article. So I can uh, click here and get the full article. And here it is. And I'm going to scroll down and see what I can see. Abstract, background, more background, resilience. Again, this is a review kind of article, so not exactly what I'm looking for. Let's try again. You know what, scanning these articles, this one here, number 80, looks a lot more promising because it's got these key letters here, RCT, Randomized Control Trial. That is definitely an experiment, so let's click on PubMed again. Well, the title of the article itself says RCT, Randomized Control Trial, so it's definitely an experiment, but let's just check and make sure. There's the abstract right there in the abstract. It tells the methods. Uh, participants were students at two Baltimore City Public Schools. In the results, it tells us that there were 300 fifth to eighth graders. And if I scroll down, I will find that all important methods section right there. So this could be a very good article for my research project. Yay, I got one. Wait, wait, before you leave the site, don't forget to go get the citation right there. Good job. The next avenue is to use Google Scholar. Here's the difference between Googling something with the word research and Google Scholar. If we Google something, we'll get a whole bunch of results. Some of them will be popular, some of them will be scholarly. But if we click on a scholarly article that we find there, we will probably get to the whole article. On the other hand, if we use Google Scholar, we will immediately filter out all the popular articles. But the articles we do find may not take us all the way to a full article you may just get an index card giving us the reference and a short abstract. So let's look at these pathways, the Google Scholar pathways. When you go to Google Scholar, you may find an article that works right there. You'll have the full text and everything you need. Let's see what that looks like in real life. So I Google Google Scholar, go to Google Scholar, type in my research question, can you teach resilience to children and see what I get. A bunch of articles, they are definitely scholarly. Some will be research, some will be review or analysis. So I'll have to scan again and find the research articles themselves with methods and results. The first article looked promising, but when I checked it out, it was a review article. The second article also looked promising, but whoops, again, a literature review. Rats. Well, let's go back to Google Scholar and try again. Here we go. Here's something that looks interesting. Using play and drama in developing resilience in children at risk. Sounds like it might be an experiment. I pulled this citation up from Google Scholar again because I wanted to show you two things about these citations. First of all, many of them will have a PDF right over here on the right. You can click directly there. If they don't have one, you can often get to it by uh, going through the title here. And also, you can get the citation right there. So let's get the citation before anything else. Just in case I want to use it, it would be better to get it now. And I'll take the MLA citation and put it in my reference document. Now, just for fun and practice, let's pretend that the PDF is not available on the right and we have to go right through the title. Let's see what happens. All right, what do we have? Download full text in PDF. Download this article. Using play and drama in children, in developing resilience for children at risk. That sounded like a great article, but when I skimmed through the article, it turns out it was just six short, very short case studies of six children and how the teachers had used play and drama to help them develop their resilience kind of interesting, but it might not be one of my three great articles that are going to support my research project. I'll save it, but I'm going to keep looking. Remember, when I say article that works, I mean that it's a research article, not a review article, a research article with result methods and results. The full text is available right on the internet, and it's focused on your topic. Those would be an article that works. Now, if you've started looking through Google and Google Scholar and you're not finding anything, you may want to change your search terms. If you're finding 
way too much stuff, you may want to narrow your topic. And then, of course, after you've found um, the three research articles that you need, run through this these steps again to find your meta-analysis. Now that you know what those purple boxes are all about, back to the search. Another possibility is that you use Google Scholar and it gives you the name and abstract of an article that looks just great, but you can't uh, find the full text on Google Scholar. No worries, just copy the title of the article and look for it in our library database using the Quicksilver Fast Search. And our library database might just have it and we'll get the full article right there in the library. And here's what that looks like in real life. Here's an article in Google Scholar that looks just great. Teacher delivered resilience focused intervention in schools with traumatized children following the second Lebanon war. It looks like it's going to be really interesting. Let's see what happens. And here's the article. Uh, read the full text. Uh, scroll down and it's asking me to pay money for the article. So no worries. I'll do what I said. Copy the title and copy. Go to the library resources click articles, paste in the title, click search, and here it is right here. Full text available. Now I have to weave my way through a little bit. Here's the article. Please stop before you go get that PDF full text. This is a great page in our library database to get the citation. It's right there. And you can choose from all these possibilities. Again, I'll choose MLA. And copy, and I've got it. Good job. And there's the full text. Scroll down, make sure it actually has methods. And there it is. Methods, participants were 983 Israeli children between the ages of 8 and 12. Could be a great article for my research project. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to download it right away. I'm going to put it right away into my project folder so I don't have to look for it ever again. Now it's time to start with the third set of pathways to finding a research article, the library database. The library database is different from Google Scholar and Google itself because it will have more articles listed and more full text articles available. It's good to start with the database called Academic Search Premier. It's a very general database, got lots of things in it, very good for a research project uh, the size of this one that we're doing in our class. If you want to try others, that's fine too. When you try Academic Search Premier, you may actually get an article with full text that works perfectly. If you come up with thousands of articles on your topic, use the peer review filter, Scholarly Journal Peer Review. That will cut out some of the New York Times articles and some of the popular articles. You can also use the date filter to filter down to certain years where you want your articles to come, to come from. Do not use the full text filter and I'm going to show you why. Let's say you go into the um, database and you come up with an article. It doesn't say full text there in the little listed abstract. So in that case, don't despair. Just click on the JS blink sign and or button and it may give you, find you an article. It'll show you exactly where we have it in the library um, amongst the many, many databases and you'll be able to get the full text article. So let's see what the JS Blink button looks like in real life. After you found a good article, instead of backing up to the library database, I found it's easier just to start over from the beginning and get to the library database from MyCI. We'll go down to databases here. We'll choose Academic Search Premier. We will type in our question one more time. 
can you teach resilience to children? Just try. Let's see what we got. There are a lot of interesting articles here with full text available, but I want to show you one that doesn't have full text available. Here's one. Effects of Cognitive Behavioral You Can Do It educational program on the resilience of Japanese elementary school students. Looks like it won't have a full text, but let me just check. Click on the JS Blink button. And right away, I've got the whole article here. And I can see it's a method. There was 125 fourth year students. So there we go. The JS Blink button came through for us. Okay, here it comes. The last pathway on this Finding Good Research Articles flowchart. Another alternative is you find uh, in the list that comes up an article that looks absolutely fantastic, but nowhere in our library do we have the full text, even if we click on JS Blink. So in that case, we'll go back to Google. We'll take the article's title and just enter it into your search bar in Google and you might get the article because it might be one that is right there listed on somebody's website. Let's look at this last possibility in real life. Back to the database one more time and stick with this last one. I'm going to show you some cool tricks. Academic Search Premier. Can we teach resilience to children and search. Now what I want to show you is the filters. Look, when I put that in, I got 29,000, almost 30,000 results. That's going to be hard to look through. So I'm going to use my filters. First off, I'm going to choose only scholarly peer reviewed journals. And that brings it down to 28,000, still a lot. Uh, let me get research just in the last 10 years and see what happens. Brings it down to 24,000. Okay, that's still a lot, but that tells me that most of the research on resilience has been done in the last 10, 10 years. Um, I can do academic journals, still 24,000. And I can do maybe just English. That's going to give me 23,000. So that's still a whole lot of articles to look through. So I'm going to add another keyword here. Uh, see what happens if I do that. It's probably not the best, but I know that I'm looking for research methods in the article, that actual word. So um, I'm just going to type that in, see what happens. That cut it way down, probably because the subtitle I'm thinking of is usually just methods, not research methods. So I probably lost a lot of good articles using that particular search word. But in any case, let's see what we got. Uh, this one here, Agency Resilience and Coping, looks really interesting. The effects of goat ownership on vulnerable children in Kenya. It's got some cool photos, but it's also full text. I want to show you one that's not full text. And I want to show you another trick. Let's see where we can find one of those. Here, for example, if you see a bunch of charts and graphs, not necessarily that kind, but this kind here, that's a good suggestion that there has been some research and they're graphing things and they're tabling out their data. So that's probably a research article as well. But again, full text, so not the one I want. The one I'm going to look at is right here. Telling stories and adding scores, measuring resilience in young children. It's got JS Blink, so I'm going to try it. Ah, your search did not match any physical resource in the library. Still not going to give up. If it's not in our library, maybe it's free on the internet somewhere. So I'm going to just Google search it. Well, here we go. Telling stories and adding scores. Just the straight up title in the straight up, straight up Google search bar. And there's the article. 
Now, to save you time, I checked this one and it was not giving me the full article. Had to pay for it. Same here. Checked it, not giving me the full article. Had to pay for it. Went here, semanticscholar.org. Stop, stop. One more time. I almost forgot. Go get the citation before you leave this page, before you get the PDF. It's right there. And you can use MLA and copy and paste it to your ref page. Good job. And it asked me to just click on PDF unlocked and I found the entire article. I checked it. It is a research article with methods and results. Saved it to my project folder. So in this case, Googling the title of the research article worked for us. Well, we've got more than enough research articles now for our project, but we still need the meta-analysis. So one more search. I'm just going to add into this second search bar, meta-analysis, analysis, and usually it's got that hyphen and search. All right, let's see. As you can see, there's not too many meta-analyses, uh, only 151. And you can see that when I typed in meta-analysis, I get meta-analytic review, same thing as meta-analysis, systematic review, same thing as summary review, systematic review, review. There's another meta-analysis. So you might not be able to find a meta-analysis that is exactly, exactly your topic. There are a few in here, uh, a little bit, um, super focused, like the resilient status of Chinese left behind children in rural areas, a meta-analysis. Um, then one about familiar caregivers, which isn't about the children, resilience in children exposed to violence, a meta-analysis. So one of these two, the China one or the violence one, might be a good article to add to my project. The meta-analysis is not the main piece, it just helps broaden our, our view of our topic question. But I'm going to try one more thing before I take one of those two. So the original research question with the word meta-analysis wasn't giving me that great a list. It was just too big and too general. I'm going to try something else. Watch this. I'm going to type in um, resilience. I started to type in resilience and they offered me um, these things here. Resilience or resiliency or strengths or coping or hardiness or adaptation. I think I'm going to take that. And I'm going to say, start typing in child and they give me children, adolescence, youth, child, or teenager. And I'm going to type in meta analysis, but I'm also going to add one more because I see as I've worked through the Google scholar and the other databases, I'm finding what's finding and capturing my interest are these uh, programs that schools and different people can do. So. I'm going to add one more search word and I'm going to put in intervention and they gave me interventions or strategies or best practices. So now I've got a nice uh, collection here of search words and let's see what I get. No results were found. No results were found because I misspelled meta-analysis. When I fixed the spelling I got 390 articles. And let's just reduce it to scholarly peer-reviewed articles. It only took out one. Let's review it, bring it down to the last 10 years. Took out a few. And let's see what we can find. Well, there were plenty of uh, interesting meta-analyses in here. I scrolled down for a while and I actually finally got to one that seemed uh, closer to what I've been looking at. I've been looking more at, as it turns out, different things schools can do. And I found this one, Components of School-Based Interventions, Stimulating Interpersonal and Interpersonal Domain. So it doesn't have, you see, the exact word resilience, but it sounds like resilience. And that's what, um, when they gave me all those suggested words, that's why that helped. Well, directly from the library database, I was able to get the whole article. It's very related to my topic. So now I have my three good peer-reviewed articles, which are research, plus a few more, plus a great meta-analysis. So success all around.
So as you can see, there's many, many different ways to find an article. Try them all and see what you come up with. You may be able to find the articles you need quickly, or it might take you a little bit more time. Remember, as soon as you find the link, load that into your reference page, load the reference, the citation into the reference page, and download the article so you can put it into your folder. Don't forget to do that. As soon as you find something that looks good, it's much better to do it right away than have to go back and look for it again. Well, I hope this has helped give you some ideas about how to go about finding great research articles for your project. As you can see, it's kind of a balance between uh, looking carefully for articles that really fit your criteria versus not spending too much time. Uh, you don't want to settle for the first article you find unless it's great. It's just a bit of a balancing act, but have a good time doing it and find some great stuff.